Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So we are now at officially the 18th, 18 month mark since I had my stroke. Recording this right now at three in the afternoon. So 18 months ago, June 21st, 2018, about this time, probably be thinking on the ICU. Um, so the last 18 months, uh, have been periods of terror, have been periods of struggle, have been periods of challenges, uh, have been periods of growth. It's, it's not been easy, right? When you've had a brain injury, be it from a stroke, be it from a concussion, be it from a traumatic event, an accident, the that day is inevitably, let me fix my hair so my parents don't complain, um, that day is basically a new birthday. So other than having the advantage of having two birthdays now, which yet my friends have unfortunately had to recognize, you're now obligated for two sets of gifts, two. So on my chronological statutory birthday, and then my new assumed birthday, um, you're kind of missing out. So more gifts this June. Thanks. So let's just talk about 18 months after a stroke. And let me just preface this. Not every stroke, not every brain injury, not every concussion is equal. So I get messages at times or I see comments at times. Well, what did you do to be so functional? What do you do? Because you look like you're making amazing progress. I didn't do anything. I, I'm just going to be honest about that. I, it's not to say that I haven't worked at things. Because there are things I have had to definitively work at. There are, like I went to physiotherapy. I went to occupational therapy. I went to speech therapy. I've been to more psychiatric psychotherapy lately than I care to want to admit or ever need to remember but I've I've had some advantages and some disadvantages um, one advantage was my stroke was caught significantly early in its in its onset so um, I had paramedics hovering over me within minutes of me hitting the floor at work I was within 10 minutes at the near, nearest neurotrauma center, you know, within minutes of getting into eMERGE, I was diagnosed with, within, you know. So the day of my event, I had many positive intervening factors that not only A, saved my life, but B, allowed me to have a significant recovery. So, I realize there are going to be a population that will end up watching this video that you're 18 months after a stroke and you're still in a rehab facility or you're still in a walker or some situation is drastically different than mine. All I can say is make a goal and, and, and I'm going to do a new video about goal setting after a brain injury. Um, make a goal make a plan to achieve the goal make sure the goal is realistic and relevant right it's something that you can a meaningfully achieve and two it has an immediate gainful side effect so you're not making significant long-term goals there are long-term goals but you are now going to have to create very short um step goals very simple step goals um and that simply could be I'm going to learn to walk around the block and it might take you six months to walk around the block and that's it's neither right that's neither wrong that's neither good that's neither bad that's the reality right um, I still have foot drop so there are times when I'm overstressed over emotional overtaxed um, I still have the PBA I can cry at the drop of a hat nobody out there drop a hat right now no nope. hats on heads or someplace not on floor um, I still have light sensitivity to fluorescent lights and strobe lights um, I'm still noise sensitive um, I still have neuro fatigue at times so please don't 
misinterpret that, you know, you see a 15 minute snapshot of my life every couple of days or so. And like, oh, he's, he's just great, doing great. No, I still have my stumbles. I still have difficulties. If it wasn't for Crash the Wonderbird, who's learned to fly up the stairs. Hey, buddy, get down here. He's still upstairs. Um, he's probably looking for me, but that's okay. So, um, yeah, about two weeks ago, he learned to fly up the stairs on his own. He's recently mastering down the stairs. If it wasn't for people like my amazing girlfriend, if it wasn't for, you know, my unofficial support animal, Crash the Wonderbird, who I'm going to actually register as a support animal just to prove how ridiculous some of the support animals are out there. Because um, recently somebody registered a swarm of bees as a support animal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other than making you honey and giving you hives and making you go out, I don't exactly see how a swarm of bees is a support animal. Um, other than fending off people you don't want to talk to because just like throw a swarm of bees at them. Uh, so 18 months, I was off for six months. I went back to work, uh, for roughly six months and I've been off work again since July 8th, July 5th was my last day of work since re my return. Uh, so I'm currently off. Um, you know, I've, I've had a neuropsychological and neuropsychiatric assessment. Um, I started counseling for PTSD because of my stroke. Well, so I have developed PTSD, uh, because of the stroke and eventually I'll get into some of that at some point. Um, you know, I have a bit of anxiety because of the stroke, you know, so it's not all sunshine, puppy dogs and rainbows every day. So there are some difficult days after a brain injury, a stroke, concussion, like it, you've, you've had a significant event that has drastically and possibly irrevocably impaired how you interact with the world. You know, you now have to be part of hashtag Team Sloth. Um, and from Scotland, if you're watching this, you'll totally understand that. Um, you know, there are days where you were just going to need to nap. And that's neither here nor there. That's just the realities. It is what it is, right? So I still have my napping days. Um, so that's, that's not a bad thing. It's just neuro fatigue. It happens. It's, I've learned a lot about myself over 18 months. I've learned a lot about other people uh, over 18 months. Um, I have learned the pitfalls and some of the deficits in the Canadian medical system over 18 months. Um, I've learned um, that some people just don't get it. They'll never understand it. And they're genuinely just assholes. Um, and that's my reality. That's something that has happened in my world. Uh, every Again, everyone's experience is going to be unique. Everyone's experience is going to be different. So in my experience, I've had some people that one would expect would be understanding, be empathetic, be supportive, and... The only term that comes to mind would be sadly lacking um, in any form of that. Not, not only mention like respect, ethics, morals, decencies, um, things of that nature. I won't get into specifics right now because unfortunately I, I can't. Um, one day I will. <clears throat> and that'll be, oh, go grab the popcorn because that'll be a fun, a fun chat. So... Oh, I had this t-shirt made when I was in Toronto for my neurological, psychological consult. So, it's got the frontal lobe, it's got the temporal lobe, it's got the cerebellum, it's got the occipital lobe, and then it has the parietal lobe. And I had it labeled, the part that tried to kill me. So, if you can see the t-shirt. Yep, did that. Again, dark humor, it's how I kind of get through some of this some days. <clears throat> It is just what I do to try to get through some of 
the difficulties. I Some people don't appreciate dark humor. I, I totally understand that. However, I was unfortunately raised on an unhealthy, possibly almost a child abuse level of Monty Python, Black Adder, Dave Allen at large, Benny Hill, um, um, you know, Are You Being Served, Faulty Towers, um, um, the one with Mrs. Bouquet, Lady of the House speaking, keeping up appearances, you know, on the buses. So I was raised on an unhealthy diet of sarcastic, dry British humor, right? So there are people in the world that will not appreciate my sense of humor. That's okay. I'm funny. You're wrong. Problem solved. That being said, Christmas is coming up, right? So in a couple of days, uh, four to be exact, it'll be December 25th, um, Christmas. Whatever that is to you, however you choose to celebrate it, it's a holiday period. You're going to have friends and family that have recently had their event that are going to be laid up in a hospital, in ICU, in a rehab unit, uh, in a rehab hospital, in a nursing home. Please, I understand between basically the 23rd of December to like maybe the 27th of December, your social calendar is pretty much a write-off because you've got family functions, work functions, work family functions. You know, um, if you're a member of the EMS, like fire, police, uh, op 911 operator, dispatcher, uh, EMS, uh, you're in the mill, you might have some unit, regimental, or, or, or uh, other work functions that you're required to attend. Um, you know, please, I implore that you endeavor to take a small slice of your time and go visit and just spend the time with the people that are unfortunately unable to attend their homes, uh, unable to attend the functions, because right now, if you would be in a hospital, you're missing the festivities, you're missing the frivolities, you're missing family and friends. So for those of you that have a loved one that is currently laid up in a hospital um, or is at home after a stroke, please take some time, go over, have a cup of tea, you know, bring some biscuits, bring some cookies, you know, just no fruitcake, no no, we all, we all know this is an actual historical fact. There are only 25 fruitcakes in the entire world, and seven of them are high holy relics, right? There's there's only that many fruitcakes. Nobody eats them. We know this. No fruitcake, right? Bring them a gift, right? Um, bring them something funny, you know? Bring them something that won't be frustrating. Spend the time with them that they're able to spend, right? Uh, and and just maybe bring them a meal. Like, clear with their staff first, because some people may be on restricted diets because they didn't pass the swallow test. Just ignore that comment. Um, they might be on a restricted diet because they're on a heart healthy or low cholesterol, low sodium. So clear it with their staff first. Bring them in a real meal, right? Uh, there's nothing worse than hospital food because... It's gross. Can we need to say more than that? And on that note, I'm going to try to do a couple more videos over the holiday season. I will, I promise, finally do the comments and questions and finish all of that up before 2019 ends and 2020 begins. Um, and then at that point, uh, I wish you all a happy, safe, merry, festivus, Christmas, Kwanzaa, Eid, Hanukkah, whatever Saturnalia, whatever festival period you choose to engage or not engage in, please be safe. Please do not drink and drive. Please take care of each other. And if you happen to know someone that is currently going through the throes of a brain injury recovery, stroke recovery, or someone that's supporting someone through brain injury recovery, stroke recovery, please, please like, Share, subscribe, point this channel out to them. If you yourself have just enjoyed my content, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little dingy bell to get the notifications. And if you happen to see someone around you or in yourself,
that appears to be going through the throes, the signs and symptoms of a stroke. That is someone who immediately appears to be befuddled or confused. Someone who has lost their balance. Someone who has vision problems, there's eye issues. They can't see out of one eye. They only see in grayscale. They see a little dot in the world. They can't move their eyes in a certain direction. Someone has a noticeable slackening of the facial muscles. There's facial droop. Someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate speech uh, for situation or context. Has uh, trouble st standing or standing unaided, you know, um, you know, and or can't can't hold their own body weight up. Please immediately place them in a position of comfort and dial 911. Some something so simple can save a life.